Hi guys, welcome back. This is now the last video of trig. So we're going to discuss solving trigonometric equations and we're going to do some inequalities in this section. And it's going to remind you a lot of chapter 8. And as in chapter 8, there are two methods for solving these equations and inequalities and it is often best to use a combination. So when you are graphing, feel free to use a calculator to graph both equations. Uh, if it's set up with one function on one side and the other on the other side, then you just set each one of those equal to the y in your graphing calculator. And then you'll want to use the zoom and trace functions to find where they cross or intersect. If you're using algebra, and you should use algebra for all of these, whether you graph or not. Um, I do have some hints and guidelines specific to this section, and all the ones from chapter 8 would also still apply. Um, so the first thing that you want to notice in this section, if you have both a 2x and an x, you probably want to use identities to change the 2x into an x so that you don't have a combination of the two. If you just have 2x, it's often best to solve for 2x and then solve for x. And you want to always be careful not to lose or gain roots. So let's do a couple examples here. For this first one, we do have cosine 2x, and we have three different options to change that. And since we have a cosine on the other side, I'm going to choose the option that involves cosine. So I'm going to change that left-hand part into 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And then I'll bring the cosine on the right over to the left so that it's all on one side, leaving us with 0 over there. And then we're going to factor that. So that factors into 2 cosine x and cosine x. And then here we'd have a plus 1 and a minus 1. And then just like before, we're going to set each one of those equal to 0. Sometimes you would skip that step and go directly to this one. And then you can, uh, over here, you would still need to divide by the 2. And then you can look on your chart and find those answers. So this would give you a 120 and a 240 degrees. And then the cosine of x is equal to 1 at x equals 0. And you could have plugged that into your calculator as well and done a zoom and trace to find those intersections. All right, let's do one that's an inequality, and those you have to handle a little bit differently, but much of it is still the same. Uh, you'll notice again that we do have a cosine of 2x, and since this time we have a sine, I'm going to choose the option that has the sine in it. So that is 1 minus 2 sine squared x minus sine x, and we still have is greater than 0. So I'm going to rearrange that a little bit and have the negative 2 sine squared x first, then the minus sine x, and then the plus 1. Now I know I have mentioned before that I don't like my leading coefficient to be negative. So you can change that. It's easier to change that if you have an equation rather than an inequality. But even with an inequality, you can do it. So if you do 2 sine squared x and then change this to a plus sine x and do minus 1, the catch is when you do an inequality and you multiply or divide by a negative, so in this case I'm multiplying by a negative 1 everywhere, I need to flip this, even though it's just still a 0 over there. But to me that is easier to factor. So when I factor that, I'll have 2 sine x and sine x, and then a minus 1 and a plus 1. Uh, and at this point, I'm going to temporarily assume that it's equal to 0. 
And I'm going to do that so that I can find the intersections algebraically, and then we'll graph it to see how, uh, like, which one is actually higher than the other at which point and such things like that. So I'm going to just say 2 sine x, and I'm going to skip that one step and just say equals 1, and sine x equals negative 1. So then sine is 1 half, and that happens. Uh, we are in radians here, so we're going to do pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And then over here, this one is 3 pi over 2. So at this point, I'm going to bring up a graph. And I've already typed those in. So here's my graph for that one. The pink one is the sine, and the blue one is the cosine 2x. I, I went back to the beginning and typed these in. And what I did was add the sine x so that it would be cosine 2x is greater than sine x when we are comparing things here. But the intersections, these are the places where the two graphs intersect. So I can just touch this and see that the intersection is 0.52, which is the pi over 6. And this intersection is the 5 pi over 6, and this intersection is the 3 pi over 2. But the question is where is cosine of 2x greater than sine x? So in other words, where is the uh, blue one higher than the pink one? So the blue one's higher from the very beginning here at 0 up until that first intersection. So that would be from 0 to pi over 6. And then the pink is higher for a little bit up until this one, the 5 pi over 6. And then from 5 pi over 6 actually to the end, the blue is higher all the way because our 2 pi would be um, right there at the max. That's the 2 pi mark, and we only have to go up to 2 pi. So from 5 pi over 6 all the way up to 2 pi, then the cosine is greater. So the way that we should write that is to sandwich x in between the 0 and the pi over 6, and then sandwich our x in between, I shouldn't have the underline there, 5 pi over 6 to the end. It does include the 2 pi. So this is the final answer that we're looking for because that is where the cosine of 2x is greater than the sine of x. All right, let's look at some guided practice here. This first section, I'll get rid of this. The first section says, describe the method you would use to solve the following equations. Uh, some of these can be solved by methods discussed in chapter eight. And number one is the one actually that we just did. So we're gonna start with number two. And that one you can actually just solve by subtracting the sine x to the left and then factoring out a sine so it would kind of look like this. You'd have a zero left and then you could factor that and uh, that's not really from this chapter necessarily. Um, number three and actually kind of number four and number five, although those do involve two X and three X, but three, four and five are all kind of the same. And this is a case where you can divide by the function because it's not really going to disappear. That would just be then the tangent of x and you'd have equals one. So then you would have to go from there. Um, and I'm not going to do those completely out, especially since some of these are going to be in your assignment, um, but that's the same method that you would use then for four and five also. But here it would be the tangent of two x would be equal to 1, and so you'd have to treat that slightly differently. And in number 5, it would be the tangent of 3x would equal 1. Um, number 6, a little bit interesting here, you would really just kind of solve it for x minus 10 degrees. You have the tangent of something is equal to 1, and so tangent in degree mode of 45 is equal to 1. So that means that x minus 10 is 45 and so x would be 55 degrees 
And you can see that if you just plug the 55 in, that would make a true statement. Um, seven, we are going to work completely out. Um, I'm not going to work number eight completely out because that is one that you're going to do in the assignment. Uh, but it, I will answer the question when solving number eight cosine four x equals one minus three cosine two x, would you begin by writing in terms of x or two x? And you would want to do two x because there is that combination of different things there. You, you'd want to do two x. Um, and then number nine, let's look at that and then we'll backtrack and get seven. So for number nine, it says on a single set of axes, sketch the graphs of y equals sine x and y equals cosine x over the interval zero to pi over two. So basically the first quadrant, um, I happen to have my calculator in degree mode when I did this. So it goes from zero to 90. So that's this little graph down here. And then it says, find the x coordinates of any points of intersection. Part of the reason I did it in degree mode is because that way you can see that that intersection is gonna be at 45 degrees. So 45 degrees is pi over four. And then it says, on what intervals is sine greater than cosine? So sine is the pink one, and it is greater over here. So then that's from 45 to 90 or in this case, they're gonna say pi over four up to pi over two. And then for the second one, or the last one here, over what interval is sine less than cosine? So that's the pink being smaller or below the blue. So that's gonna be from zero to 45, or zero to pi over four. All right, let's do this number seven here. So we have the sine of four X equals the sine of two X. And so we don't have just x's and we don't have just two x's, but what we can do is write this as the sine of two times two x. And so then we have two x and two x, and we're gonna treat that two x as a double angle. So then we have a double angle formula. So we would have two sine two x cosine two x equals sine two x. And then we're gonna subtract that sine 2x so that everything is all on one side. And then you can actually factor out, greatest common factor, the sine of 2x. It's in both of those terms. So I'm gonna pull that out. And what I'm left with then is the two cosine 2x and a minus one. So then I'm gonna set both of those equal to zero. So the sine of two X equals zero and two cosine two X, I'm gonna add the one and just say equals one. So then let's just finish that one. Cosine two X equals one half. And you can look up the one half on your chart, but you do have to realize that that's actually then two X. So 2x equals the 60 degrees from the chart and the 300 degrees from the chart. And what's interesting with when we do the 2x, you can divide those and get 30 and 150. But we are supposed to answer these, and I didn't write it down up here, but we're supposed to answer these all the way to 360. Well, here, you know, you're at 300, but when you divide them in two, only at 150 so there are gonna be some other answers and the way that you get those is back up here on your 2x I don't want to make it look negative um, but on your 2x line do a coterminal angle for each of these so 60 plus 360 is going to give you 420 and 300 plus 360 is going to give you 660 so then those need to be divided by 2 as well so 210 and 330. And at that point, you have gotten all the ones that would go between 0 and 360. And we haven't done that on this other equation. Um, so then 2x would be 0, looking on your chart to see where the sign is equal to 0. But it would also be 180. I'm going to need more room there because we're going to have to do coterminals for those as well. So that gives you an x of 0, 
and 90, but we need to do a coterminal for 0, which would be 360, and a coterminal for 180, which would be 540. And then divide each of those by 2, so you get 180 and 270. So I do want to look at a graph of that as well, so that you can see all of these different things. And I'm going to have to probably look to see if I type those in. Yeah, I did. So it's the sine of 4x and the sine of 2x. And I do want to be in degree mode for this one as well. So I'll have to zoom differently here, adjust my windows, which is easier for me than it is for you. Um, but you can see then lots of different intersections. So there's the one at zero, here's the one that's at 30, which is right here. Uh, there's one there that's at 90, so we've got that one. So you'd have to kind of go nuts with your zoom and trace to make sure you get all of them, but there are eight of them within that range. So graphing calculators can be very helpful, but the algebra is also good. Well, that's all for now. If you're going to stick with me for the second semester of pre-calc, there are more videos in your future. Have a great day.